Okay, we've got the gasket in there. The dowels are all in. Now we're ready to put the, uh, the new GT40 cylinder head on there. So this thing's got uh, some fresh, um, well, relatively fresh springs. Uh, it's been gone through by the machine shop. Um, the seals are all brand new and uh, everything's been cleaned up. So um, I'm not sure if these springs will be good, but if we encounter any problems at high speed, we'll uh, have to change those out. I think we could do that in the vehicle. So we don't have to pull the heads off again, thankfully. I'll tell you what guys, those cylinder heads are goddamn heavy. Anyway, make sure you use brand new head bolts because uh, they do stretch. They're really a one time use fastener. So I got the, uh, the long ones in there uh, for the bottom, these short ones. Um, they say you should cover these in, in silicone because it goes through the coolant passage. So I'll give that a shot. Hopefully it doesn't leak. Okay, so I got all my bolts in, just uh, just snug right now. But the way you want to torque these is uh, in three or four steps. So um, 30, uh, 50, and then 70 or 80 foot pounds. I'll have to look that up. But the the pattern you want to go is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So torque them in three steps, all three bolts, or all ten bolts. I mean. Okay, so one thing I figured out from the other side is that there's really nowhere to grab these cylinder heads. Um, so I put these bolts in where the thermactor goes, you know, where that air pump goes, uh, front and back, so uh, I can have something to grab at least. Okay, I got both the heads on. Actually, this side here went really well, so I just, I didn't even bother filming it. Uh, I kind of struggled with that one. Um, anyway. Next up, I'm going to start putting the valve train together. So, sliding the push rods down, getting the rockers bolted in. Okay, so here's my valve train components. This here is the front of the engine, and I lined them up exactly how we took them apart, or took them out. So, we're going to put them back in. Now, I got, not new ones, but I got used uh, rockers from the new heads from the GT40s. But I'm gonna keep using uh, these ones because because they're they're worn into the um, the push rods, so I like to keep that mating surface the same, and then it'll just wear into the new valves. Okay, so I got all the rockers in. They're not tight yet though, so what you need to do is um, you see the lifters here. The intake side is uh, is lifted up, so you gotta get your Get your ratchet on the crank pulley again. And I'll try it with one hand here. Turn it until both lifters are at the bottom. Like that. Now you can see the cylinders at top dead center. Okay, so here's the big power maker here is the lower intake. Look at the size of these ports versus those. Huge difference. Um, so, but there is one modification on these GT40 intakes. The um, air temperature sensor that goes in cylinder five runner, it's not drilled on this one. So we're gonna have to drill this out. Um, I'll put that thing in there. I think it's a 3 8 MPT. I'm gonna have to look that up. Um, the other thing is we gotta make sure to take this, uh, this, this sensor here, which goes to your dash for um, your water temp, put it in there. Uh, don't forget your PCV mesh, which I took out it's up here now. Um, otherwise, it should bolt right up.
right guys, here's where we're at. We've got this thing tapped and drilled. It was a pain in the ass. Um, I think the GT40s, the boss, is a little bit thicker than the rest. And uh, you can't see that, but it doesn't look like the sensor actually goes into the air path, which is not a deal, I guess, but anyway. Um, so there's the china wall. So what I do is I put a little bit of RTV underneath the gasket just to hold it in place, and then I put some on top too. Especially in these T-joints, right? Um, that's where it's gonna leak, where all the gaskets meet up and stuff. So front and back is done, now I'm just gonna uh, drop the intake on and bolt it up. So I got the uh, lower intake all uh, torqued. So now there's just a few things left to do here. Um, coolant tube that goes front to back, and then uh, the fuel rails. And then uh, we gotta hook the fuel lines back up here down here. And we're good to go here. All right. So we're getting buttoned up here, fuel rails in, coolant tube, uh, it's not in all the way yet, I still gotta tighten it up, but uh, while I'm in here, I'm gonna change the thermostat. This is a uh, 180F opening temperature. And uh, the one that was in there was a uh, was 192F. So uh, definitely gonna gain a little bit of power there with the colder, all right, I do realize I had the thermostat in backwards when I was expanding it last time, but anyway. Um, got the uh, thermostat housing on, got my fuel rails uh, clipped in, got my coolant, uh, well, my heater tube, uh, which is uh, just, just looped off at the end there. Got that all connected, so I'm working on putting the valve covers on now. But People always ask me why I hate RTV, and the reason is it's really hard to get RTV out of all of these little all these little crevices when it's applied. The first time it's great, sure. But look at the mess. Don't get me wrong, there's there's a ton of place for RTV, but just lapping lapping it on a cam cover, that's not the time to use it. Just use a cork gasket. Okay, it's time to put the intake on now. I got uh Get all the wiring done, the injectors are all plugged in. Um, everything's good to go. I'm gonna put the distributor in uh, after the intake. Make sure everything clears and everything bolts up because I got new throttle body, EGR delete, that kind of stuff. So yeah, I got new bolts, new gasket. Nice uh, nice gasket there, fell pro. Uh, all right guys, I got uh, most of it back together here. Ran into a little snag though, so. I got these pretty nice valve covers. Um, the only problem is that they're really tall. And you can see it, the breather hits my intake. And, uh, well, it's not so bad. I could probably get a shorter breather, I hope. Um, but the other problem, if you come around to this side, is that there is no clearance between the throttle bracket here and this thing will not bolt up. It just doesn't, it just doesn't fit under there. So I might have to make my own. But that's for future me to worry about. For now, um, I just want to get this thing started. Get put the exhaust back on. Um, the headers are just laying in there right now, um, and then start it up because I want to hear this thing. So. I'm gonna put the headers on for the last time. What this thing is, is an installation um, for the starter. So I still got the big, you know, four and a half inch starter. You can kind of see it over there. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap it with this installation. And uh, the plan is that uh, the, the, the starter is gonna survive a little bit longer with some insulation. So if it dies, then we'll go to a small starter. But for now, we're just gonna use this stuff. Okay. I got the, uh, the insulation wrapped all around the starter. Now, I got a little bit on the wire here too, which is uh, what I wanted to do. But I essentially just took bailing wire and tightened it up around there. It was a pain in the ass. But if this lets my uh, starter survive with these long tubes, I'm, I'm happy. So, uh, yeah, now we can button it up and uh, put the exhaust gaskets on and fire up. Okay, we're ready to start. I set the. TPS voltage, it was good. Put my plug wires on, uh, so I got no rad. 
and no alt mains or nothing here. So uh, it's just gonna be a quick little trial run, make sure everything works okay, no leaks, and then uh, put the rest of it back together. One thing I forgot to mention here before we start it, this is the upgraded MAF. This is, um, it's the 93, 94 um, Mustang GT MAF, and it's quite a bit bigger. So I think the stock one is, uh, here it is. It's something like uh, 60 or 65 millimeters. This is like 75. It's significant. And then I got the 70 millimeter Holly uh, thrall body in there. Um, I don't have the cables hooked up right now, so I'm just gonna throttle my hand in from here. But we're ready to start. Okay, round two. Got everything buttoned up here. I got the whole front end on. I just kind of put the belt on. Um, got the rad in the new uh, aluminum radiator. So I don't know if you guys remember, but I had this uh, overflow bottle here. It's kind of kind of junky. But I went on eBay, bought this cheapo um, aluminum one, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try and figure out where we want to mount it uh, down on the frame rail or something. And then uh, this will solve solve all our uh, overheating issues. All right, guys, I filled her up, added all the coolant in here, filled her up with uh, water, uh, put the electric fans on. That's where I decided to put my overflow bottle. I'm a little pissed because they didn't have a, they didn't have any black hose. So anyway, I'm gonna use that ugly one for now that sticks out. But uh, I ran it for a while. I burped the cooling system. Everything's good. So, so now's the time to fix that uh, issue with the throttle not opening. Uh, I went and bought a one inch uh, spacer for the intake. Uh, I got some longer bolts and some gaskets. So we'll be lifting this intake up an inch. And hopefully with that, our throttle right here, is gonna be able to clear the coolant lines. All right, so there's the Spacer and look at this. No interference whatsoever. Perfect. So one more thing we have to do here is uh, these are our stainless steel um, header bolts. They're a little bit too long. The flange on my headers is not as thick as the last ones. So these bottom out on the block, which causing which is causing some leak because we're not compressing the gasket. So these are just over an inch long. So I bought these that are uh, three quarter inch and then there's a washer there. So these should uh, seal up real nice. 